Hey guys, don't panic. I know this looks a little scary. We're going to solve some rational equations today, okay? I know we've got variables in the denominator, big fractions, okay? But we are actually going to be getting rid of the fractions, okay? So let me show you really fast sort of a different example of what we're doing, okay? So if I had this problem, we're not going to actually solve this, but if I had something that looked like this, I don't really want to deal with that massive fraction, right? So one strategy with this would be to multiply both sides by five. I can multiply anything as long as I do it by both sides, right? And then what happens when I do that is these fives cancel, this becomes 50, and then I'm solving this instead, which still might look a little intimidating, ugh, intimidating, <laughs> sorry, but is a lot better than that guy, right? So we're doing something very similar here in that we're actually going to get rid of these fractions, okay? But what we need to know is what do we multiply by to get rid of those fractions because this isn't as simple as just a five, right? Okay, so my first step is I'm going to factor anything I can. So these guys are already factored, right? But this guy I can factor. And when I factor this, I'm going to get x plus 1 times x minus 2. If you need a factoring review, you're like, what on earth did you just do? I'll link a video in the corner, okay? So that is this, sorry, this is that factored, right? So now what I notice is, oh gosh, I've got x plus 1 here, x plus 1 here, x minus 2 and x minus 2. So that is helpful that we're seeing some similarities here. So what I'm looking for next is called my LCD, okay? My least common denominator. This is just like when you add and subtract fractions, right? If you were adding one half plus one third, hopefully your brain was just like, oh, my least common denominator is six, right? That's the smallest number they both go into. In this case, we just multiply the denominators. Now that's not always going to be your LCD, but oftentimes it is. And in this case, that is going to be our LCD is when we multiply these two, right? So my LCD is x plus one times x minus two, right? All of these divide into that, okay? Now, what do I do? Now I'm going to multiply everything by x plus one times x minus two, okay? So I'm gonna use a different color so we can kind of see it a little distinctively, I guess. So I'm going to multiply this side of the equal sign, hold on, by <laughs> x plus one times x minus two, okay? And I'm going to multiply this side, okay? Now when I multiply this side, we gotta think of this as a group, right? They're being added. So if I multiply this side, I would be distributing it in to both of them, right? So I need to multiply both of these by x plus one times x minus two. This guy and this guy. And as long as I did it to both sides, I'm good, right? My equation stays true, okay? All right, but now let's watch what happens. This is the fun part, okay? So when I multiply these, guess what? This guy and this guy cancel. So then I'm just left with two x times x plus one there. Okay, plus, that's that guy. What happens when I multiply here is the x plus ones cancel, right? So I'm just left with three times x minus two. Okay, that looks a lot less scary, right? Like I can, I can deal with that, right? All right, let's see what happens here. Um, guess what? x plus 1 cancels and x minus 2 cancels. What? So I'm just left with negative 9 over here. Okay, that is a lot better, right? I can do this. So I am going to first distribute the 2x in. So I end up with 2x squared plus 2x. Okay, then I'm going to distribute the 3 in and I get plus 3x minus six equals negative nine. Okay, now I'm just combining like terms, right? So these guys are like terms. So I'm gonna end up with two x squared plus five x minus six equals negative nine, okay? Now, normally we're trying to get x alone, which 
we're still trying to do that, but I've got an X squared and an X, right? So we got to handle it a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is try to get everything to one side and then see if I can factor that. Okay. So I'm going to add nine to both sides and I end up with two X squared plus five X negative six plus nine gives me plus three. And we're now equal to zero, right? Which is what we wanted. Okay. Now I'm going to see if I can factor this. Okay. I'm just going to tell you what the factoring is. If you need a reminder on how to factor this, I'll link a video for it in the corner. Okay. But when I factor this, I get X plus one times two X plus three. Okay. We're still equal to zero. Do you see how now I don't have an X squared? So I'm feeling a lot better about life, right? <laughs> okay. So now I can set each of these equal to zero. Okay. So I'm going to have X plus one equals zero and two X plus three equals zero. Okay. So then when I solve this guy, subtract one from both sides, I get X equals negative one. And then this guy subtract three. And then I divide by two and I end up with X equals negative three halves. Okay. Now you're almost done. Okay. I know you want to be done. We're almost done. One other thing we have to do with rational equations, whenever we start with uh, blah, blah, variables, I forgot the word. Whenever we start with variables in the denominator, we have to check for what are called extraneous solutions. Okay. I know that's a big word. Basically, what we're checking for is we cannot have denominators that equal zero, right? We don't deal with those. We just, we don't, right? We don't like those at all. So I have to check and make sure that none of, that plugging these in, none of them will equal zero, okay? So if I plug it in here, I get negative one minus two, which would give me negative three. That's fine. But when I plug it in here, guys, I get negative one plus one which is zero, which would make this fraction three over zero. And that's a big no, no. Okay. So that means even though algebraically this came as an answer, it's not actually an answer. It's what we call an extraneous solution. Okay. So if I turned it into my teacher with X equals negative one as one of my answers, guess what? I'm probably going to lose a couple points. So make sure you're checking for those extraneous solutions. Now, when I look here, negative three halves is good, okay? So that would be my answer, okay? There's kind of two methods for checking for extraneous solutions. You could have started by just setting each of these equal to zero at the beginning and just noting, okay, if X equals either of those things, once I solve, it's an extraneous solution, right? Or you can go ahead and solve it like we did and then plug it back in whichever way you prefer, right? You get a pick. Okay, hope this made sense. If you need some other examples, I will link a playlist for you. Thanks.